all over the world, every culture has a prophecy of the end of the world. Probably none so more famous than uh, the Mayan calendar date of December 21st, 2012. Well, did the Mayans, Nostradamus, and other cultures have a secret glimpse into a God's plan to the end of the earth? Uh, is there a link between ancient prophecies and what the Bible presents as the end times? Well, tonight we're going to discuss that and maybe learn a little bit more right here on Atlanta Live. everyone. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining here on Atlanta Live. I encourage everyone uh, to, uh, of course, uh, put that remote down, call all their friends to uh, watch uh, tonight's episode as we uh, tackle the uh, topic of 2012. With, uh, Gary DeMar, author of uh, Last Day's Madness, Obsession of uh, the Modern Church, and actually he's a uh, author of a bunch of other books <laughs> as well, and I'll let him uh, ramble through the list right now, but I want to definitely just jump right into this conversation. So, Gary, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, tell me a little bit uh, about, your, about yourself. Are you from here? How do you? Uh, well, <clears throat> I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and uh -huh. traveled around quite a bit. I became a Christian. I ended up in, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and became a member of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, where D. James Kennedy was the pastor, and then went to seminary from there in Jackson, Mississippi, at Reformed Theological Seminary, and through a series of providential moves, ended up in the Atlanta area. And I've been with American Vision since uh, about, 19, about 1980. Okay. And have, American Vision is a Christian worldview ministry. We believe mm -hmm. that the Bible applies to all areas of life. Mm -hmm. And as I would go out and teach on that, inevitably people would come up to me and say, why are we bothering with all this since Jesus is coming back soon? All the signs are around us and so forth. Yeah. And so I knew that in order for, for me to meet those objections, I needed to go back. I knew what the issues were. I went back and studied it a lot more and began to put it as part of some of the talks that I do to deal with the issue of Bible prophecy okay. and uh, showing that a lot of people misapply prophetic texts. And as a result, we get in this loop that every generation, we, you know, there's a new group and a new, new set of Bible prophecies and a new set of interpretations telling us that this is the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, well tell us about that. Let's go right into and give me some examples because I would dare say when people, you know, say, you know, oh, well, it's, it's in the Bible. You know, this, you know, the end times are coming. It's written right here. Um, I dare say a lot of people actually can't point out you know, scripture of a prophecy that would pertain to right now. <laughs> I, I, I think that, uh, I think people say, well, there are lots of, there, there's so many wars going on today. Yeah. Uh, and actually, there are fewer wars going on today. I mean, the, the Second World War was a world war. First World yeah. War was a world war. We have wars going on. Um, but when, when Jesus talked about there will be wars and rumors of wars, I believe he was talking about the events leading up to and including the destruction of Jerusalem, which took place in A.D. 70, the, uh -huh. the Olivet Discourse. Because the, you know, Jesus leaves the temple in Matthew chapter 23, says your house is going to be left to you desolate. The disciples come up to Jesus and they point out the temple buildings to him. And uh, Jesus said, look, not one stone here is going to be left upon another. They're all going to be thrown down. And the disciples are, you know, flummoxed. Yeah, yeah. And they said, what is this going to be? And so Jesus gives them the signs leading up to the, the destruction of Jerusalem because that was the question. Mm -hmm. Verse 34 says, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Yeah. Every time this generation is used in the Gospels, it always refers to the generation to whom Jesus is speaking. It never refers to a future generation. Uh -huh. Jesus had a future generation in mind. He would have said, that generation will not pass away. Mm -hmm. And so the wars and rumors of wars and the famines, in fact, Acts chapter 11 says there's a, there's a, there was a famine over the entire Roman Empire. Uh -huh. uh, there were wars and rumors of wars throughout that particular period. 
Luke talks about the, the, the seas, the waves, and so forth. Um, and uh, the gospel being preached in the whole world. Now, that's an interesting passage. And they'll say, well, the gospel hasn't been preached in the whole world yet. Well, yeah. Jesus was very clear that the gospel, was being, the, the gospel that was being preached had to be preached in the oikumene. It's a Greek word which, which means a, 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 political, a political boundary area. It's the only time Matthew okay. uses that word. And it's the same word that's used in Luke 2, 1, where it says that the decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world be taxed, oikumene again. The, the famine that's the, in Acts 11, oikumene again. It, this, that, was, that was local. In fact, we read in, the, in, in Paul's epistles that the gospel it had been preached to every creature under heaven, Colossians 1, 23. Um, obviously hyperbole, but he's talking about the world at that particular time where these, the, that these signs were clear evidence that the, that particular generation would see the destruction of Jerusalem, which in fact happened. So um, going back to, I just want the, the Greek word oiko, 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 oikumene. Okay, oikumene. Uh, so saying that if I'm the mayor of Atlanta and are putting a attacks over Oikumena, the world, I'm literally just meaning Atlanta. It, my, my, the world that, I, that, that I, I, we control over. or I I'm, I'm, I'm a, uh, have authority over. Okay. Caesar Augustus couldn't tax China or India. He could only tax the Roman Empire. Yeah. And it's interesting that Matthew, that's the only time Matthew uses that particular word. And most translations use the word world. They translate it as world. Uh, you'll see sometimes a margin, inhabited earth or a Roman empire. Uh, but if you wanted to use the word world world, you'd use yeah. the word cosmos, which we get the word cosmic from. Okay. For God so yeah. loved the cosmos. Mm. Um, so it's very important that we well, pay that's attention good to know this that time. that uh, word yeah. <laughs> yeah. implies that. Yeah. Cosmos is the other word. Okay. Uh, well, um, tell me what's, uh, uh, um, what's, what's the thought then, you know, talking about you know, Armageddon and, uh, you know, there's going to be a great war, a great battle. Well, what, you know, where is this coming from? Well, that comes from the book of Revelation. Uh -huh. And uh, the book of Revelation, look, it's a tough book. It's filled with all types of symbols. There's no, yeah. there's no doubt about it. A majority of those symbols are from the Old Testament. Uh -huh. if you, want, you can't understand the book of Revelation unless you understand the Old Testament. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh -huh. um, but it's interesting uh, the, there's a big debate as to when the book of Revelation was written. Some mm -hmm. people say it was written during the time of Domitian, which would have been around A.D. 70. But others say that the book of Revelation was written prior to the destruction of Jerusalem, which took place in A.D. 70. Mm -hmm. John is told in Revelation chapter 11 to measure the temple. Mm -hmm. um, and there are still worshipers in it, and there are still Gentiles, so this is an earthly temple. And so people, they, they say, look, this is an indication that this was written prior to the temple's destruction. Mm -hmm. Then the book, book of Revelation begins, the very first verse says, these things must shortly take place. Verse 3 says, for the time is near. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, there's a lot of debate about the book of Revelation as to what era it's talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, much more scholarship is coming out today that the book of Revelation is a, is a symbolic representation of the Olivet Discourse. It's John's version of events leading up to the destruction of Jerusalem, which took place in AD 70. You see, we don't, we don't have the same kind of mindset that a Jew would have. The destruction of the temple, yeah. the ending of the sacrificial system, the ending of the priesthood was a, dest was a destruction of their world. It was, yeah. it was a it was, it was, well, they were scattered to the, to the four winds after that. Many of them were taken off into slavery, into the Roman Empire. Um, and uh, some, Josephus writes, the historian of the time, an eyewitness to these uh, things, says that more than a million Jews were killed in the conflagration. Oh. Um, so it was a devastating, devastating effect on, uh, on, on, the, on the nation of Israel at that time. Mm. Mm. Um, could, just hypothetically, go, you know, if... Uh, you have the, the words of Jesus that we read, and he was obviously, you know, talking to the disciples, but there's that double meaning that he's, you know, talking to me too, that, you know, his word is golden. When we look at the prophecies, when you look at the book of Revelation, can you see an element of, while well, they're talking about this literally thing, event that happened, 
but then it could also be talking about something you know far off in the future well there is this idea of double fulfillment uh -huh. I don't know where you stop with that you know once <laughs> you start with a double fulfillment yeah. why not triple and so forth um, I, I, I really do believe that this it's, it's talking about a particular event just like Jesus died on the cross we wouldn't yeah. say well there could be a double fulfillment and we yeah. could have another Messiah who's going to die on the cross and we wouldn't say that I always tell people while there's one singular meaning to something there's ongoing application. Jesus' death on the cross mm. applies throughout the century. It applies mm. to the world. And while uh, the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 took place, and that's what Jesus is referring to, it is a warning to us. Yeah. If, if, if we're not faithful, the same type of thing can happen to us, but that's not what Jesus was getting across. He, mm. The question was, when are these things going to happen? related to the destruction of Jerusalem and in fact that took place. There is application to us in all of Scripture. Yeah. The, 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 the flood is another example. You can go all the way through the Bible. In fact in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11 that we're told to avoid Israel's mistakes and Paul right. says these were written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Avoid Israel's mistakes. And so that's always a warning to us. Any minister gets up in the pulpit, takes a passage of scripture of some event, and makes a modern day application of it. But before you can make a modern day application, you have to understand what it was originally talking about when it was first written. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, tell me then, what is the, uh, not the application, but the meaning then of, of Christ's return, of him saying, hey, I am going to return, and that's what, you know, we've, you know, looked forward to. Uh, looking at um, Scripture, you know, in light of Scripture, what, what, is, what is this pertaining to? I, 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 I believe that this, <laughs> I wish I had more time. I, 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 I believe that the, that the gospel will have its impact on the world. Mm. Uh, that we should be about the business of the gospel. We should yeah. be about the business of bringing people to Christ. We should be about the business of discipling those people to such an extent that the nations themselves are transformed as a result of the gospel. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that should be our focus. Uh, and uh, we, I think if we, we put our efforts into that, trans, transformed hearts result in transformed minds, result in transformed hands. Uh, we begin to see that the gospel has its effect throughout the world. And I, I, you know, yeah. I look at what we're seeing today as, uh, as, the, as an assault on that, because I, I think we're on the verge of some, some magnificent, magnificent uh, transformation of our world, because people are seeing the failure of secularism. Mm. Uh, they're seeing the failure of a bank, of literally bankrupt cultures. Yeah, uh, yeah. And when that sort of thing happens, people have, they're turning for solutions and answers. And yeah. that's the personal work of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. I know. I, I agree with that. When people are, when the culture is falling apart, we need to be there to uh, say, hey, we do have hope. You know, here's what we have. And, um, and that mindset of just going, of regardless of what you believe, I think that mindset of saying, well, that's your problem because I, you know, because Christ is coming back any day. I think that's that is definitely missing the point of, you know, of what Christ's message is for us to, you know, love one another and you know and ha and bring people closer to God through our relationship that we have with Him. So um, I definitely appreciate you coming well, and you. talking to us and giving us this, you know, a, a new side. We can't have discussion without having, you know, different views and right. and. Being in the Bible Belt for so long, I think we also tend to forget that there's other, you know, ways to look at something. There's other interpretations, and you know, and when I st studied the Bible, the first thing you know that I was taught was look at the times. What is going on, you know, at the time that the author wrote it? Yeah, yeah. You know? Look at the time time indicators. When when is an event going to take place? Look at the audience. It's interesting that all the way through the uh, the Olivet discourse, Jesus uses the second person plural, you. When you see wars and rumors of wars, when you see the abomination yeah. of desolation, so it's all of those things are very important to anybody studying the Bible. Good. Good. Well, we'll have plenty of more time to talk about that. Thank you so Thank much you. for uh, stepping by, and, and please hang out a little bit longer.
and uh, I'm going to come back right after this.